Hi everybody, my name is Miranda and in today's video I'm going to be talking about some of the terms that get thrown around in relation to people on the autism spectrum. When people talk about someone on the spectrum, they usually refer to them in one of two ways, as an autistic person or as a person with autism. At first glance, these terms may seem like they're just two ways of saying the same thing, but it's actually a bit more complicated than that. In this video, I'm going to be drawing from my experience as a psychology student and as a person with autism, and I'll do my best to highlight the major differences between these terms. That being said, I do not presume to speak for all people on the autism spectrum, so don't take what I say as gospel. It's impossible to speak for all members of the community, so there's no one-size-fits-all term that everyone prefers. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into it. The distinction between the terms I mentioned has to do with language, and more specifically, how one uses language to conceptualize autism. There are two general ways of doing this using identity-first language or using person-first language. This can get a little bit complicated, so I'm going to start by explaining what both terms mean and then I'll get into how it applies to autism. Person-first language quite literally puts the person first when discussing an aspect of their identity. Let's use hair color as an example. You would be using person-first language if you referred to me as a person with pink hair. The idea behind using person-first language is to emphasize someone's personhood rather than focusing solely on their identifier, whatever that may be. Mental health professionals are taught to use person-first language when referring to mental illness. So if I had a client who had been diagnosed with schizophrenia, I would refer to them as a person with schizophrenia rather than a schizophrenic. The idea is that a person may have a disorder, but that disorder does not define them. Identity-first language, on the other hand, puts someone's identity first. Using the hair color example again, you would be using identity-first language if you referred to someone as a redhead or a blonde or a pink head, I suppose. The idea is that the identifier is an inherent part of that person's identity. They are indistinguishable from that identity because it's a part of who they are. From a purely semantic point of view, identity-first language often just sounds smoother and less clunky than person-first language. It makes more sense to call someone an American rather than a person from America, for instance. But Miranda, how does this all relate to autism? I'm so glad you asked that. If you say someone is autistic, you're using identity-first language. The emphasis is on their identity as a person on the autism spectrum. On the other hand, if you say that someone is a person with autism, you would be using person-first language since you're putting their personhood before their identity. Many people on the spectrum prefer identity-first language, that is, they prefer to be called autistic, for a number of reasons. They argue that since autism is an inherent part of their identity, it makes sense to use language that reflects this fact. You have to understand, autism is not just about how you relate to others socially. It affects how you think, how you act, how you experience the world around you, every aspect of your life. People who prefer identity-first language reason that it's impossible to separate someone from their autism, and for that reason, you shouldn't refer to autism as something that can be picked up and put down again. People on the other side of this debate, the ones who prefer person with autism as a label, they argue that the term autistic has negative connotations, which is a fair point. There were times in the not-so-distant past when the term autistic was used to demean and dehumanize people on the autism spectrum. People who prefer person-first language do so because they believe adding the word person emphasizes the humanity of people on the autism spectrum. And as I mentioned, there are plenty of situations in which one should use person-first language. You would never call a cancer patient a cancerous person. However, it would be a big mistake to try and compare people on the autism spectrum to people suffering from cancer, as some people have tried to do. As I have said in a previous video, autism is not a disease, and autistic people are not suffering from or afflicted with anything. So identity-first enthusiasts argue, if autism is not a disease or inherently negative, why should we try to distance ourselves from the term? One interesting side note about this whole person-first, identity-first thing is that it's more or less unique to English-speaking countries. Many other languages do not use the same sentence structure as English, so where to put the term autism in a sentence is a non-issue. For example, in Spanish, person with autism is persona con autismo, while autistic person becomes persona autistica. 
In both cases, autism slash autistic follows the noun. That just goes to show you how much language can change people's perceptions. So that was a very brief overview of the different labels people use for those on the autism spectrum. I know it can seem complicated and a little overwhelming, so when in doubt, just ask how a person prefers to be addressed. I tend to use the terms interchangeably, and I won't get offended if you refer to me one way or the other, but as I said, I do not speak for all people on the spectrum. And that's it for this video. Before I go, I want to let my fellow autistic friends know that you are amazing, you are unique, and you deserve to be treated with respect. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!